welcome back it's another video on hot taco and thank you guys so much for asking for another apollo explorer review and thank you joe putz um i think you definitely should get the scooter and in this review actually i'm going to be talking about my experience with it we're going to be showing you some close-ups and last but not least we are going to show you the Apollo Explorer in action, shot with my DJI Maverick Mini drone. So, let's get right into it, and I'm going to give you my first analysis on what I think the scooter has. Um, Joe Putz has commented and said, can you please, please give us, at what speed do you notice or what percentage do you notice that there is a decrease of speed on hills and at what percent do you notice that there is a decrease in speed great questions joe putt because i think you're definitely going to need to know those if you're willing to buy this bad boy but one percentage i would like to say would be for the hill climbing speed one thing i would definitely say is i would see it at I know this doesn't show on the sundial, but around two and a half bars, which is 50%. Because hill climbing speed, you're going to need most of the energy powered by the 1000 watt motor in the back. There's none in the front. Sadness. But I would say around 50%. Because that's honestly when you realize, oh, one bar, one mile is going down, then it's two miles. And when you hit like the two mark bar, the scooter is still able to ride it on for another 20 mile, no, sorry, 15 miles. Um, but the hill climbing speed is definitely gonna be a little slower. On um, normal flat speed, same thing, it's around one and a half bars, two bars. That's around 30 to 40% of battery left because it's used up most of its 30 miles and now it's going a little more slowly but i think that's really good it's perfect um next thing i'm going to say is talking about the braking i slipped up a little in my other review um but if you're going at max max speed then one thing um, if you hit the front brake and the back brake, um, the front brake is a, a the front brake is a manual brake and the back brake is a hydraulic. They are both disc brakes, though. The reason, the difference between the back brake and the front brake is the back brake when you pull it, it's the same technique. You pull it and the lever over here will be moving around. I'll show you that la later in the video, but yeah. What happens is, if you just pull the back brake, then it will stop in about roughly five, seven, five, six meters um, going at max speed because that's just gonna cause the entire wheel to stop, but that's the back. If you hit the stopping or the breakage on the front brake, then I would say it's roughly at three meters. So I definitely think that's way better and going at max speed that's what apollo advertised it for three meters i think isn't too bad but if you're definitely going near stop signs or busy roads i definitely think you should be going at around mode two so you'll be able to stop much quicker if a car comes by number two um one experience i had with my scooter was actually my tire pump and if you didn't see it already make sure you go and check out the video i think it's going to be up there or there um and i show you how to repair it you have to at least have a couple of boats and take out the disc brake but the reason why my tire popped is not apollo's fault that's actually my fault the reason it popped was i kept hitting the hydraulic brake but i wasn't doing it i wasn't doing it slowly i wasn't pulling the lever slowly to a stop I was yanking it, which caused the back brake to entirely stop, and it just skimmed on the floor before it took its stopping place. And that's what caused these parallel tire to wipe off the little marks that give you the, um, not balance, but it gives you your traction, which means if you're riding, you're gonna have more traction on it, 
which means your scooter's not gonna slip. And what happened was that is I rode after a speed bump, but I hit the brakes and I ran over a pothole. And since my scooter didn't have the fraction there, it couldn't protect it and it popped. So, and that's what happened. But I wanna tell you guys how I mainly broke my disc brake. I think the reason I broke that, no, the reason I broke that is I was riding around on my scooter and what happened was, since I was so excited to get the new scooter, I kept stopping and pulling the brakes, having a nice time, but I, what I realized is my scooter wasn't having a nice time, which meant the disc brake got hot because I kept pulling on it, so it kept getting hot. I kept clamping it with the brakes right down here, and that's what caused the disc brake to get hot and I ran over some mud, which mud is cold. So when hot hit the cold, it bent a little, causing the disc brake not to be able to rotate as good, which caused it to be always breaking. But we fixed that. All you have to do is loosen out seven screws, I think. That's with all the screws you need to. And then you just replace the new one. I think it's around $20, $25. But that's really my performance. I definitely like this because we go on these small hikes. They're not really hikes, but we go around in like a small forest, usually in my family, not sure about yours. And this scooter takes it like a champ. It does have trouble around like big tree roots, but otherwise it is perfectly fine. It uses its double suspension, one in the back, one in the front to protect it from being a sturdy thing where you just go dun, 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 and just to a nice smooth ride like it should be. And I think definitely why, I think Tee Pablo has a good price feature for this scooter with all the new tech features. So I definitely think that's a good buy. And another thing I would like to say before I go out is my battery use. My battery use has been all over the places because one there's been a lot of snow and that's why i haven't been posting a lot i did build a snow fort though yay um but my battery usage has been really good on my scooter i have hit over the 260 mile mark and on my brothers which we got two weeks or three weeks before he hit around already he's hitting around 290 miles the 280 miles so definitely good job we're using these scooters a lot and the battery is staying perfectly fine our scooter we've had it for six months now and it's going perfectly fine staying around the same percentages it's just maybe a one or two mile drop at the same percent but that's totally fine that is a perfect actually if you look at a bunch of other school scooters manufacturer puts it say 25 miles an hour but it only goes 20 off the bat and then in six months it's going to be like 18 17 max the apollo manufactured it at 30 miles an hour and look at it it's soaring perfectly at 30 miles an hour with it sometimes we even higher hallelujah <laughs> so now i'm actually going to show you around the close-ups of the apollo explorer on the things i think are important so let's cut right into that clip. The first thing we are going to start off with here is the Apollo Explorer grip pad. Um, it has strips of black. I'm not sure if this is leather, but it has strips of black, blue, and white. They're pretty smooth and flat. But the real thing about the grip pad is in between those. It has a nice great pull and you love feeling the smooth to the rough and it's a definitely good grip pad. So the grip pad is an A plus, perfect performance. Now we're gonna move to the back of the scooter an inch to the dual brake suspension here. Um, it's definitely been good. It's definitely held up a lot of weight. Me and my father can ride on it. So it's definitely good. It's good if you want to get it for multiple people. On the next thing we're going to is the tires. The tire is pretty good. Uh, like I said, 
I broke this when I was riding and that's why it popped, but I haven't had that since. But we are gonna make our way slowly to the disc sprays. This is actually the one I bent. It's cause when you pull the brake, these squeeze together, which causes that one here for this side to squeeze together and it's gonna clamp the disc brake like that but the hydraulic brake won't just clamp it. It lets it slide a little, which is why I like it. Um, but how I bend mine is, it's hot when you keep clamping down the brake, cause it needs to go tss, and like the entire thing pulls on it. And when you're running cold mud, it's not gonna be good for the disc brake. And that's how I mainly bent mine. And there's a cord that runs through down into the body. Next thing I'm going to be showing you guys is along the Apollo Explorer. And it's near the front. It's called the charging port. This is how you are supposed to do it when you are riding it. This is so that it clamps around the metal part. So water won't get in. This scooter is not waterproof, but it is water resistant. It's a three hole output and the charger is three hole input. It takes up roughly four hours on the Apollo Explorer fast charger to charge it to maximum. And it takes roughly around eight hours to charge it maximum on the normal. It's a good charge time for 30 miles. Next thing is another disc brake we have in the front. I definitely think that's good. But that's next thing we're doing is to the front of the disc brake and the front of the Apollo Explorer. If you can see over here, there's a light. Over here, there's a light. And over here, there's a light. The one thing I really like about them lights is they shine in front of you really nice and far. It's really good. It gives you like another two feet visual in front of you just the tire to move away from potholes. But I think it's definitely really good for it. And so I would give the lights an A plus quality, which is perfect. They are very bright to help you see. Next, we're gonna be moving down along the scooter to the kickstand. I was looking at other scooters before this and they kept saying their kickstand was breaking off. Like they put it somewhere and every time it'd be falling off or breaking off, causing to damage the scooter. But this has not been the problem with the kickstand. Kickstand has stayed perfectly on and perfectly fine. And one more thing I want to show you, which is kind of around the entire scooter, is the LEDs. First thing you see is a strip down the front. It alerts cars that they're in the front. The next LED you see are the lights. And down here, along both of the sides and more lights at the back end of the scooter. See, I'm going to be showing you the other side too now. You can even see the LEDs there. So that's, that's basically the close-ups of the Pollock scooter. Now we're going to go and show you the awesome clips of this baby in action.